Uh, hallelujah. This is my wonderful husband, Michael Bailey. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's you. Thank you, Jesus. I just, once again, whatever you have need of, Jesus is here. His blood will cover whatever oh, yes, it is it that you need. Amen. Amen. So tonight, come and receive from the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank Jesus. You. Hallelujah. Does everybody here love Jesus? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Everybody here is thankful for what he's doing in your yeah. life. What he's Amen. Doing. Yes. How many of you go through a time where you're feeling dry? Yes. 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 How many of you going through a time where you, you feel downtrodden? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You know, they were, they were talking last night, and, and I've said this. I, I really got no message, so that's probably a good thing. That means I can't mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a book full of sermons, and I said, God... You know what you want from these people here tonight. Yes, Jesus. I believe everybody that's here tonight is ordained yes, by God. And this is a prophetic message to each and every one of you. Mm -hmm. mm. I want everybody, first of all, I, I try not to uh, imitate anybody. No canned messages. But I was uh, involved with this great outpouring at one point in my life. And, I try not to look at my past, whether it be of something I did before I knew God. I try not to live in my past as far as spiritually. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, Jesus. the devil isn't so much concerned about your future or your past. Sometimes he just wants to keep you where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. Amen. He wants to keep Hallelujah. you complacent. Yes. He wants Come to on. keep you where you're not moving forward. If you're not moving forward, you're backsliding. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, Jesus. it brings me to remembrance of the old uh, rearview mirrors. In a rearview mirror, you keep looking back. You know, sometimes when we come out of something, it's like Lot's wife. Mm -hmm. She wanted to look back because she she was holding on to something. Yeah. Sometimes we get so dramatically transformed that we walk out in a blaze of fire and we want to see it burned down in the rubble yeah. behind us. Amen. But I want to tell you something. It's like looking in a rear view mirror. As long as you keep looking in the past, you can't go forward. If you're looking yeah. backwards, you can't Come go on. forward. Come you'll on, miss preach. the signs. Preach it, brother. Preach. And God has given us all signs. He's trying to tell us something. And He's speaking. And it yeah. says that we're dull of hearing. We're dull of seeing. But as you're looking in that rear view mirror, you notice in the old ones, it would say, objects are closer than they appear. <laughs> Your past come on. Come back upon yeah, you. Yeah, and I want to tell you, it would you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Keep looking forward. Keep looking at God. I want everybody to repeat after me. Dear Jesus. Dear yeah, Jesus. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Change my life. Change my life. In your precious name. In your precious name. Amen. 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 Uh, brother of mine did that every night before service. And again, I say, I, I don't try to can anything to repeat it, but God, that's just so powerful. Amen. Did anybody come here that wasn't looking for a transformation? No. Anybody at all? Why did you call? You think you're the prettiest person here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Elvis would envy you. Uh, I'm telling you that God is here to do things in us. Yes, what we do as humans, as we try to uh, think of how God should move, a lot of times we also think that God will do this, won't do that, can do this, can't do that, unless we all touch an agreement and say, Okay, whatever's bound here is bound there. And God, that's scriptural. Don't get me wrong. But let me tell you something. God don't need you agreeing with Him because He's God Almighty. Come on. He's the creator of all. Yeah. And when He speaks, things come into existence. Yes. Amen. Ezekiel said He is a will in a will. So that means He's perfect within Himself. He didn't need us to come worship Him. He had every supply and every demand at His, at his fingertips. That's right. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Man. All right. And I don't care what it is you're going through in life. Yeah. We all go through things. I go through things. It doesn't matter how you feel. 
Because a feeling means nothing. I woke up the other day and God said, I need you to go to Kentucky. And I was said, Lord, I don't want to go to Kentucky, but your will be done. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I did not feel good. I was sick in my body. I've been sick in my mind. I've lost my mind. Has anybody here ever lost their mind? We need to learn to lose our mind. Come on. Jesus. Put on a new mind. God don't go around spackling things. He doesn't use duct tape. He doesn't use super glue. He knows that our temples and our houses are broken. Yes. Hallelujah. He replaces. He gives you a new mind. Yes. He gives you a new heart, friend. Yes. Amen. And that's what we need. We need to get rid of our carnal thinking. Yes. Yes. Our mind, our Amen. body, it works on five senses. Amen. Smell, touch. Anybody want? Taste. Can anybody hear? Him? Huh? Taste. Taste. <laughs> taste. That's a good one in itself. I got a whole message, sister, right there in taste. Mm -hmm. You know, speaking of that, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for giving me something. You know, I can tell you what a strawberry tastes like if you've never eaten one. I can tell you how good it is, how red it is. You can be blind. I can tell you all about this strawberry. But you'll never really know until you taste it yourself and until you taste the goodness of Jesus Christ and God the Father Almighty and His Holy Spirit. You'll never know what it's about. Hallelujah. And when you're in those trying times and you're in that darkness and every thought that comes at your mind yeah. that you don't want to think about that bombards you and those tormenting spirits and your past and your hearts and your rejections and your abandonment comes up on you. Amen. You think it because that's your mind. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you that the only way you can transform your mind is through the Word of God. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Preach it, bro. Amen. Come on. The Word of God is truth. Yes. yes. The Word of God, it says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of what? God. 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 I urge each and every one of you not to pick up spiritual hitchhiking. Don't just listen to a preacher on TV. Don't just listen to Michael Bailey. Don't just listen to Brother Wayne. But listen to the Word of God. Yes. Amen. You want an intimate relationship with God? You want God to move in your life? You want yes. something different than what's going on now? Then you need to be intimate with Him, y'all. Yes. Come on. He's yes. looking down. He wants a relationship with you. Yes. Hallelujah. He loves you. You know, sometimes we can't wrap our mind around who he is and we shouldn't try. Because it's beyond our thinking. Thank God. I'm like, Brother Wayne, I've got an imagination, brother. Mm -hmm. I've got an imagination. Daniel, let me give you a concept here. Ezekiel says it's a will within a will. Daniel said that he was hewn out of a stone, mm -hmm. out of a mountain. Isaiah said that he sit on the circle of earth. Yeah. Come on. And he makes a prince as nothing. He controls the winds. He controls the waves yes. at the sound of his voice. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Now, with all these great things that these men said about him, it still touches nothing of who God is and what he is. Yes. He's all in for all power over all. Yes. So we got to get out of our carnal thinking. They say that we have a million mental receptors that, that, that here that, that does our thinking for us. Amen. They say that when you close your eyes and, and your dreams, let me tell you something, first of all. Satan will have you believe things. It'll have you believe you're a failure. Yeah. It'll have you believing that you need to kill yourself, that it's so much easier to get out of this life. Yeah. It'll have you believe that you need to be on medication to make you feel different because you're working on emotions and your feelings. And I want to tell you something. I, I've done drugs. I've did this. I've done everything under the sun that God's delivered me from. And there's no greater high than the power in the blood in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. There's no hold. Jesus. No hold in your life that hell has right over you yeah. if you've given your heart to God 
And he can't hold on to you. He can't hold on to nothing in your life. Yeah. Amen. Nothing. Amen. God will set you free. It's never been a question in the spirit of who wins. God always wins. Yeah. Always wins. Yeah. When the devil tries to bring up your past, you remind him of his future. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He don't have much of a future. It says he is as a roaring lion that he's out to seek, kill, to steal, and destroy. It doesn't say that he's a lion. It reminds me of the Wizard of Oz. So had everybody scared. When it says, one day we're going to look back and we're going to say, this is what tempted us. This is what scared us. Elijah, the great prophet of God, had fear come upon him because the devil come out and he ran and hid upon her juniper tree from a woman. Sorry, right, love you ladies. I know it says that it's better to be on a housetop than in the house with a brawling woman. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Maybe he knew that. Y'all forgive me, can I take this off? I'm getting hot. I think of my preach for a second. Praise God. But let me tell you something. God does not put fear on you. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. He won't condemn you. He'll give you a spirit of conviction, yes. but not condemnation. Yes. He will Amen. chasten you. Amen. He will whip Amen. you because He loves you. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on. But condemnation is not of God. Amen. Don't look at your past. Look at your future. Yes. Amen. We get unbelief. Amen. So then they say that we have over a hundred million to a billion. I don't know how they count them. I don't know how they count caffeine and calories and all that. I don't understand it. But I'm just going by what they say. Uh -huh. I, want, I want to challenge each other. I want everybody in here to close their eyes. We're going to try something. Everybody got their eyes closed? Close their eyes. Yes. I want you to think of a beautiful sunrise. I want you to think of the most beautiful green flowers of red and blue. Yellows, whites, purples, a mighty mountain with water cascading over it, a mighty waterfall falling down into this great massive hole of the stream and flowing harshly, waves slapping the side of the thing. Now open your eyes. You're still in Kentucky. <laughs> Did you see it? Yeah. Yes. The devil will have you do that. He'll have your mind think stuff that's not of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Renew your minds. I'm going to find a scripture here. <laughs> Romans 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind yes. that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yes. Amen. And on down it, it speaks of, matter of fact, I'll just read through it because I could go through the whole New Testament. For I say through grace given to me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we've got different callings. Yes, hallelujah. We, we've got different, you know. I'm not, because my toe is hurt, I'm not going to cut my foot off. No. I need it. Amen. In the body of Christ, there's, there's people that, that's got a, a prideful, jealousy spirit. Amen. And they, and they say, God, come into this place. Blow through here, Lord, as a wind. Well, I'm going to tell you, God is a wind. He is a wind. He's always moving. It's us that's not moving. Yeah. But what happens is, it'll come in, it'll hit this sister right here. It'll hit this brother right here. 
and somebody may be over here and they don't like the way that it happens. Maybe they flop around in the floor. But you don't know what's going on in their lives. Amen. You don't know what's going on in their minds. Amen. You can be with your best friend. You can be with your spouse and you can have a general idea. But let me tell you something. Things are constantly eating at people that you never really know. I've talked with people, counseled with people, they leave and blow their brains out. Oh we never know how long we're going to be on this earth. Yes. And if we don't have our hearts right with God, we're going to hell. Amen. Come on, brother. But you can't even give your heart to God without the renewing of your mind because your thinking won't allow it. Come on, God, you can heal this. You can do that. But you can't do this. You can't save my marriage. And we get in the middle of it and we think, who are we? Who are we to think that we can outdo God? That God, you can't do this, so I'm going to help you with it. Yes. God forbid. Amen. Yes, come on, brother. There's nothing that God can't do in us. Yes, Amen. hallelujah. I know we get frustrated when we don't see it manifest at times. And the devil, that's just what he wants. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I know y'all been praying for some time for revival. Amen. Yes. Basically, I'm going to tell you most of you only, most of you only know as revival as being something different, better. You don't have a true concept of it. I've been in the presence of it and I still can't figure it out. <laughs> Except it's a true manifestation of transformation of lives as a God. Amen. Amen. You want to know if God's real, if God's in something? It's not about manifestations. It's about transformations. You can flop in the floor and still get up with a black heart. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. The devil can throw you in the floor just as quick as God can. There's two spirit worlds. Yes. And they're real. Yes. And they always manifest themselves in the physical. Yes. Amen. Always. So we got to get out of our, our mind, our thinking. You know, doctrines. We've been talking about General Baptist and this one, that one. And we're not knocking any. I want y'all to understand right now we're not knocking any doctrine. We're not knocking, knocking any church except maybe Catholic Church of Christ. I just got to put that Jehovah's. I can go down with this. Blessing Jesus. But yeah. it, it, that's not what we're doing. But it's because of our minds, our desires, our passions, not God. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to conform God to our thinking. Amen. It's a damnation. Our minds. It's a battlefield of the devil. Let me tell you something. The devil's been around a long time. He's slick. He's sharp. He's smart. Yeah. Yeah. He's man. two moves ahead of you all the time. He knows the word. He'll manipulate it. He'll come in as an angel of light. He'll send something that looks good, but it not be of God. And you're not grounded to this. He will tear you apart. Amen. Yes. Amen. This man said today, challenge you to do what? What was the challenge again? Put it out there, brother. Read the word. 30 minutes a day for 30 days. Yes. How hard is that? Not hard. Sometimes it is. But it really is it's simple. Yeah. <laughs> Do you not love God enough to give him 30 minutes of your time a day? <laughs> Amen. You know, going through McDonald's don't make you a Big Mac. <laughs> Pulling into a garage don't make you a Lincoln Continental. <laughs> <laughs> Going to church don't make you a Christian. Right. Amen. Only the blood of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, Lord. I'm telling you. Yes. You're on the verge of something that's the greatest move of God. Mm -hmm. Since creation. And then Jesus came along, which was the second biggest move of God. And He ascended into His Father. And He sent forerunners. And like Brother said this morning, there's been people plowing the ground. There's been people laying seed. And it's been watered. And you can get the harvest right now. But you got to repent. Get your heart right with God. Walk towards holiness. And you'll see the greatest yeah. move of God that you've yeah. ever seen in the history of man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I know this. Why? Because I know my father. I know his voice. If I'm in a crowd of people, if it's a million people, and I hear my wife say my name, I stop. Yeah. 
Because I know it's her. Amen. Why? Because I've communicated with her. I've got a personal relationship with her. I'm working towards an intimacy. And every day it's just a little closer. Sometimes I don't feel intimate with her. I don't feel like, ooh, goose people love. <laughs> sure she wants to pinch my head off half the time. Especially in the mornings. I'm a miserable person in the morning. Not miserable, I'm just not all there. I've never been all there, but as I'm trying to gather up what I do have, I'm, I can be miserable to people. I'm a pain. I'm a hemorrhoid. <laughs> An honest man. <laughs> you know, but this is one thing we've got to learn that we've got to come naked before the Lord. Now I don't mean do like I say and stuff. Don't don't go through mm. the wilderness. Don't run outside naked. That's a whole other message too. And read the whole context before you start picking out. You know that that's another thing we do. It's like a smorgasbord. We want to pick and choose what we want. And we'll take it literally today, but when it gets, goes against our grain, when it goes against our desires, our passion, and our thinking, then we twist it. And that's the devil in your mind. He'll manipulate it, turn it around, and twist it for him. Then next thing you know, you're petting and you're pacifying sin, and sin will damn you. It will keep you from a relationship with God. Yes, yes. Amen. Come on, brother. Come on. If you ever want your life to change, change your mind. Our minds are mush. Crispy critters. We don't burn it out with our thinking. Some of us burn them out with drugs, doctrine, religion. <coughs> change it. Yeah. And the only way you're going to do that is what? By the word of God. Yes. Amen. I said this morning, if you pray to God, when you pray to God, He speaks to you. Mm -hmm. yes. He speaks to you through His word. Yes. He speaks to you through His Word by His Spirit because the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the cross is the same Spirit that dwells in you. We don't have to go to a temple. We don't have to go to a priest. We've got Jesus as our great intercessor. Amen. And we can reach the throne of heaven, the altar of God ourselves. Yes. We can pray for our children. We can pray for our family. Amen. God will tell you why. Because we've got that spirit. And when we don't know what to pray, the great intercessor, he gives us utterance and he reaches heaven for yes. us. Yes. Amen. And he'll send his warring angels down. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And we'll reach through the heavens yes. Amen. to the throne of God. Amen. Our attitude determines our altitude. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. How high do you want to go? I don't have time to sit around with buzzards. I'm going to soar with eagles. Amen. I don't have time to play marbles. I've got a giant to kill. Yes. Amen. Yes. We've all been called. We've all been chosen. I've always heard in my life that we've got a great purpose. I never really understood that. I didn't. Amen. Years of my Christian life. Yeah, we got a purpose to be here and stay miserable. I thought that. How many Christians do you know that are miserable? Mm. All the time. Yeah. Whoa, me. Whoa, me. My feet hurt. My back hurt. Well, praise God, Sunday morning they got over that. Now my kids always got something going on. And don't get me wrong, we've got things that we should edify. And when they cry, we should cry. When they're joyous, we should be joyous. We were talking the other day, Brother Wayne, at the house and stuff. The Christian army is the only army that shoots its own soldiers. Hallelujah. Amen. I prayed before God, you sure we can't shoot at least ten people? <laughs> I was going for three. Three people? <laughs> three. <laughs> you know? I want to tell you something. If we'll go after God, He'll change our yes. lives. Yes. He'll move us into the race that He wants and His will. Yes. We'll learn to hear His voice. We'll learn who we are. As Sister Bernie was saying the other night, we'll learn who He is. We'll know who we are, who we are in Him, who He is in us, yes. and what He can do in our lives. Yes. And then we have an identity. And it's not yes. about conceit. It's about confidence. I'm a man of God, and yes. I can trust the Lord. 
over serpents. I can sit over scorpions. I can raise the dead. I can heal the sick through Jesus Christ. Yes. His name and his blood. Amen. Amen. And nothing has a hold over me unless I allow it. Yeah. Yeah. Only I can stop the will of God in my life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Only you can stop God moving in your life. Nobody else. He gives us will. And I want to tell you something. You ever heard the commercial? It's hard to stop a train. You can't stop a train. Come and on. I'm on a train. Amen. But you can sit there and you can praise. You can hallelujah. You can read the Bible. You can pray all you want. But if you don't apply it to your life, yeah, right. it's to no avail. That's right. That's right. Amen. It's like being an old steam locomotive. You're sitting there and you're throwing the fire to it. You're throwing the coal to it. And the steam and it gets hot. And it gets hot and it gets built up. And it gets built up and you can reach up there and go, Pull that whistle and let it all out. Or you can slide it in the gear and put that train in motion and go down the track four. She gets, y'all get it? <laughs> Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus Christ. Woo! Out your hands. Heart of God. <laughs> you want things to happen? Move with God. Move towards God. Mm -hmm. There's three kind of people. There's people that watch things happen. There's people that make things happen. Uh -huh. yes. And then there's people that wonder, what in the world just happened? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I don't want to be one of those. Hell I don't want somebody coming to my life fulfilling my purpose. <laughs> because if you're not doing it, he will remove you and have somebody else do it. Because God's yesterday, today, and forever, and his plan never changes. No, no. No, I won't, I, I'm not somebody that's ever been average. Preach, come on. I want to read something to you that I've got, that God gave me a while back. We must overcome the idea that we should be normal because it robs us of the opportunity to be extraordinary. It only allows us to be average. I'm not average. I've lost my mind. Come on. I'm peculiar. I'm different. I always knew it. Always, are you average? Have you ever tried to achieve anything in life? You said, well, as long as I can get set here. I don't want to be good at it. I just want to sit here. Jesus. Have you? Have you? Have you? You just plan on your life just to be a nothing for God? Or do anything else that you ever did? Have y'all? No. You played ball song. What's your name? Right. Oh. What do you like to do? Fish. Fish. Do you go out there just to throw an empty line in the water? No. You prepare, don't you? Jeez. You probably find out what the weather's doing, how the fish are moving, what area, what location. You go to, to achieve a goal, don't you? What's that? Catch fish. Catch fish. In the name of Jesus, <laughs> you're going to be fishing for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Come follow me, he says. Jesus. People who are constantly just praying for God's will are getting run over by people doing God's will. You understand? Now I'm telling you, God's wanting to do something in our lives, in this church. And the church is a body in this church building in this town. And I know I hear God and I know what He's told me, but I can't do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. And you have to get right with God. And it doesn't yeah. But don't yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? 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 What are you going to do for me? Was it not enough that I sent my son? To die for you? Yes. Yes. Jesus. Was that Jesus, good enough? Jesus, Jesus. Yes. Lord. Was that good enough? Yes. Was it good enough? Yes. Do you want to keep going back to where we were? No. Do you want to? Because what we're doing, the Bible clearly says that 
crucifying Jesus again. We're spitting in His face. Yeah, and we can't get out of the cycle. It's just an ongoing cycle. It's an ongoing cycle of the same thing. Let me tell you something. Don't, ex don't expect change in your life. If you're doing the same things, don't expect a different result. Right. You can move mountains. But if you sit there and you keep hitting your head against the wall and you think that wall is going to move? No, it's not. Well, first of all, that's the definition of insanity.